This is Brian Wisenant. Today I'll be discussing the use of CardioBand for the treatment of functional mitral and tricuspid regurgitation. Mitral regurgitation is quite common. Of the mitral regurgitation encountered in the echo laboratory, the majority is of a functional etiology. However, the large majority of surgeries performed in the United States are performed either to address isolated degenerative disease or functional disease in the setting of concomitant bypass surgery. Surgery for isolated functional mitrogurgitation is not only uncommon, but it is less efficacious than surgery for degenerative disease. There is therefore a large unmet clinical need for less invasive repair of the mitral valve. The majority of tricuspid regurgitation also has a functional etiology, TR, uh, most often remains untreated and is associated with dyspnea, right ventricular failure, peripheral edema, hepatic congestion, dysfunction, and excess mortality. Surgical tricuspid re repair is associated with substantial morbidity and mortality and is in fact the highest risk of any of the isolated valve surgeries. There is therefore clearly an unmet need for less invasive repair of the tricuspid valve. This animation explains how functional mitral and tricuspid regurgitation are connected and why they're often encountered in the same patients. As the, mitral, as the left ventricle dilates and thins either in the setting of ischemic or non-ischemic heart failure, as volumes increase, the mitral annulus is stretched, leading to malapposition of the mitral leaflets and mitral regurgitation. As LA pressure and size increase, pulmonary hypertension ensues. This leads to RV dilatation and tricuspid annular stretching. Again, we have port leaflet coaptation with tricuspid regurgitation. As the underlying mechanism of functional mitral regurgitation is in fact annular dilatation, the concept of annular constraint has been around for quite some time and was first published in 1956. Mitral annular rings not only improve mitral leaflet coaptation and diminish mitral regurgitation, but they restrict LV dilatation and diminish LV wall stress. Mitral rings are therefore the foundation of mitral surgery for functional mitral regurgitation and represent a standard of care today. The cardioband is a catheter delivered annular reduction technology. There is growing clinical experience using the cardioband for both mitral as well as tricuspid regurgitation. Our goal today is to review the technology and the clinical experience to date. These three animations demonstrate the cardioband procedure. The procedure is performed via the femoral vein and transeptal access to the left atrium under 3D transesophageal echo guidance. The catheter is then steered to the anterolateral trigone where two anchors are passed through the cardioband into the fibrous tissue anchoring the distal end of the band. Transesophageal echo is used to identify the hinge point of the annulus. The cardioband and catheter delivery system are then navigated posteriorly around the annulus until the Medial trigone is reached where final anchors are positioned. After the cardioband is fully anchored, tension is applied under 3D echo to constrain the annulus and optimize MR reduction. Similar to a surgical band, the cardioband restores the valve to a more functional state, facilitating leaflet coaptation and reducing mitral regurgitation. A CT scan is used for pre-procedural planning and an appropriate size band is selected according to each unique patient's anatomy. Unlike surgery, cinching the band with real-time transesophageal echo confirmation allows for optimization of mitral regurgitation while confirming the absence of mitral stenosis. These videos demonstrate persistent mitral regurgitation after anchoring the band, but prior to cinching the band at baseline, and then a reduction in mitral regurgitation after final adjustment.
cardio band has seen mark approval for the treatment of functional mitral regurgitation based on the multicenter European study. Key inclusion for the mitral C mark study included symptomatic patients with class 2 to 4 heart failure despite optimal medical therapy, including CRT and revascularization. If indicated, the patients had an ejection fraction between 25 sorry, greater than 25% with an end diastolic di diameter of less than 70 millimeters. They had moderate to severe mitral regurgitation and were at high risk for mitral valve surgery. They were excluded with PA systolic pressure greater than 70 millimeters of, of mercury, renal insufficiency requiring dialysis, significant right ventricular uh, dysfunction, and a heavily calcified mitral annulus or mitral leaflets. 61 patients were treated with the cardioband in the CMARC trial, of which 60 were implanted. At one year, there were seven deaths, of which one patient was device-related. 39 patients were available for one-year echo follow-up with 38 patients with clinical follow-up at one year. At two years, there were 20 patients with echo follow-up and 27 with clinical follow-up. The demographics were quite typical of an FMR study with a mean age of 73 years and a mean ejection fraction of 33% and a high number of other comorbidities. At 30 days, there were two deaths, one from an intracranial hemorrhage and one from multi-organ failure and sepsis following elective mitral surgery. There was one myocardial infarction likely related from interference of the cardioband anchor with the left circumflex artery. There were two patients with bleeding complications and one patient with cardiac tamponade. There was a significant reduction in the septolateral diameter by the echo core lab observed in all patients. And this reduction in septolateral dimension was stable over time. The reduction of mitral regurgitation was, all, was not only significant, but was also stable over time with 95% of patients demonstrating two plus or less mitral regurgitation at two years. This translated into marked improvement in New York Heart Association class in heart failure quality of life scores and improvement in six minute walk distance. So in summary, transcatheter mitral valve repair with the cardioband system is feasible and safe. It is associated with significant and consistent reduction in mitral regurgitation as well as significant and consistent reduction in septal lateral dimension. This translated into stable MR reduction and clinical improvement for 12 months. This also preserves the anatomy and keeps options open for further and complementary interventions such as edge-to-edge -edge repair or perhaps transcatheter mitral valve replacement. The active trial is now recruiting patients in the United States. This is a two-to-one randomization comparing the cardioband and guideline-directed medical therapy to GDMT alone. The primary endpoint is a composite of both the prevalence of MR less than or equal to 2 plus and then a hierarchical comparison including cardiovascular death, heart failure, hospitalization, improvement in six-minute walk distances, and Kansas City quality of life scores at one year. So we're now going to change directions and talk about tricuspid regurgitation. As mentioned previously, TR is extraordinarily common and only the very small minority of patients with significant tricuspid regurgitation are treated surgically. Tricuspid regurgitation is clearly associated with increased mortality. And again, the majority of TR is functional in etiology. This is a consequence of RV and annular dilatation. The cardioband tricuspid system will be quite familiar to those who are using the cardioband in the uh, mitral valve. It is very similar using the same concepts and uh, transesophageal echo guidance, but is modified modestly. And once again, after the cardioband is anchored in place, it is cinched for optimal uh, TR reduction as demonstrated in these video loops. As demonstrated in these animations, the when treating the tricuspid valve, the system is again accessed via the femoral vein and then implanted from commissure to commissure anteriorly and then finally cinched under transesophageal echo guidance. Pictured here are the participating sites from the initial tri-repair study. 
This is a prospective non-randomized study of 36 patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation. Serious device-related and non-device-related adverse events at 30 days included death, stroke, uh, significant bleeding complications, and coronary complications. However, 77% of patients had none of the above events. The cardiogram resulted in a clinically significant reduction in the set in the septolateral diameter in all implanted patients. And this was sustained over six months. This translated into important improvements in six minute walk distance, Kansas City quality of life scores, New York Heart Association score, and peripheral edema. The quality of life gains noted at 30 days were sustained at six months follow up. So in summary, transcatheter tricuspid valve repair with the cardioband system is feasible and safe, resulting in significant and consistent reduction in tricuspid regurgitation, as well as significant and consistent reduction in septolateral dimension. It is translated to stable TR reduction with clinical improvement at six months. The a US feasibility trial is now enrolling patients to confirm the clinical benefits observed in the tri-repair study.